to China, one of the world's oldest civilizations, and today home to the largest population on the planet. Over its long and storied history, this land has experienced countless changes, but the last 100 years alone have seen this nation undergo a truly unparalleled transformation. China's remarkable rise from a divided, war-torn nation to become a major economic and technological powerhouse is a story of unprecedented progress in the space of just a century. But just how was this country able to turn things around so quickly? As 2021 marks the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Communist Party of China, let's journey back and find out what was the catalyst for this great leap forward. What was the source of this momentous change? Who inspired it and where did it take place? Who were the key witnesses and participants in this progression? And who are the young people carrying this change forward today? Away from Beijing's bustling modern CBD, China's century of stunning change can be traced back to its academic institutions where some of the country's brightest young minds put forward their case for the future of a new China. Back in the early 20th century, China was a weak, divided and politically unstable nation. But a glimmer of hope emerged through the growing new culture movement, which sought to rejuvenate the country. During this great intellectual awakening, the old campus of Peking University became one of the key centres for change. One of the leading architects behind this new dawn was a well-travelled socialist named Chen Du Xiu. After many years on the road, he arrived in Beijing and took up a post as Dean of Liberal Arts at Peking University. Around 1915, Chen started to rally young people through his regular journal publications, where he shared his own thoughts and values and called on youth to shoulder the responsibility for the revolution of China. As a great admirer of French culture, he retitled his magazine as La Jeunesse, or New Youth. Another highly influential figure at that time was Li Dajiao. He was appointed chief librarian at Peking University back in 1918, when he was still only in his 20s. Li had intently studied Western ideologies and began publishing a relentless series of articles, as well as delivering lectures on Marxism. Li's activities soon caught the attention of the university's passionate student groups, and among those to take an interest was a young Mao Zedong, who Li had employed as a library clerk. Chen and Li were the leading lights pushing this progressive wave of thought, drawing other like-minded young peers to believe in the Marxist cause. I think in that time the students have very open to take new ideas, new all kinds of new thoughts and they're trying to find one that can work best in China. So they are happy to take new ideas like socialism, like Marxism, to try to rescue our nation, our country. Young people are always energetic. They have a lot of energy to do many things. It was this energy and youthful enthusiasm that sparked support for a major socialist upheaval which ultimately culminated in the birth of the Communist Party of China in 1921, marking a milestone in the formalisation of these ideologies into a serious political entity. By the 1930s, darker times were again on the horizon as Japanese forces sought to expand in China but a new generation of inspired young intellectuals were not afraid of taking action. On December 9, 1935, hundreds of students assembled, united in their cause and calling for greater government action against rising Japanese aggression. They gathered in numbers, summoned their strength to make their voices heard. Almost 50 years after this famous December 9th demonstration, a special memorial was set up in the northwest of Beijing to pay homage to these patriotic students. There are reminders at this site of just how pressing the danger was and why the young people felt the need for urgent action. This contemplative statue reflects the growing sense of unease that many students felt at that time. During the 1930s, as the Japanese threat grew, 
many students lamented that there was no longer a quiet desk at which to study. News of the brave students who took to the streets of Beijing soon filtered across the country and helped to mobilize the masses, bringing a sense of unity to a fractured nation and raising awareness of the need for a united front to face up to a growing external threat. This was a collective effort involving thousands of students who joined hands and seized the initiative in order to defend their nation. The spirited band of organisers who coordinated the December 9th demonstration had already marked themselves out as extraordinary young leaders. These revered participants of the December 9th movement have set a glowing example for their young successors to follow. Stemming from the ideas instilled by the intellectual pioneers at Peking University over a century ago, a new era of youthful heirs are full of dynamism as they pursue their own dreams and shape the future course of the Chinese nation. I think it's better to say that we're standing on the shoulders of the giants. Uh, that means we need to do something to make the dream of China can come true. So I think that's why we always have a lot of passion and inspiration to uh, further de uh, develop China to make it develop rapidly. As the baton of history is passed from one generation to the next, it's always young people who are there to carry the torch forward to the future. <laughs>